now I'm going to ask uh, if you guys would like to continue. So, like, you're all kind of still on your separate ways. Um, and I assume at least for a little while, you guys still want to continue doing the uh, initiative thing of, like, going I'm, about I mean, your it, it worked, individual business. Yeah. Last time. Yes. Yeah, until happy. we all end up, like, in the same spot. Yeah. Okie dokie. Yeah. All right. So, yes, we're going to roll initiative once again. Okay. So, um, first up, Renee... Uh, yes. Where are you going? You're going to Umlems? Yeah, I'm going to Umlems. I'm going to Umlems. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, no. You were, you were. Where were you going? I was like, am I going? No, pots and pots and pots and pots. Pots and pots and pots. Right. My bad. Sorry. I'm mistaken. Sorry. Sorry. See, that's me. That's me being the the consenting player and going. Oh yeah, I guess I was going there and not remembering where I was. No, that was my bad. Uh, yes, Wyrus, girl, I got you. Let me bring you all your goods. Yes, you head back to Wyrus. And with, uh, along with the, uh, the traitor person who follows you yeah. as well with the ingredients. And let me just find Wyrus. I actually added the, uh, potions that <gasps> she has now. Yay! So if you look down at the bottom, if you scroll down, you can see the various types of potions that she sells. I, f I forgot Fantastic. how she was. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So, um... Well, first off, I'm probably gonna just kind of walk in like with all the goods. Yeah, you walk like, in. Yeah, you walk in <laughs> with the provider, and she looks at it. Oh, thank goodness you took care of the scalpers. And thank you so much. And the uh, the provider just kind of like throws a bunch of the ingredients on the on the counter, <laughs> and he's like, "Next time, give me a better route, would you?" And she goes, "Of course, of course," and hands him a little pouch of gold. And you, madam, you will get a special discount. First three purchases, half off. Oh, well, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Oh, this is so, oh, that's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. She's just like, sitting there going, oh, yeah. But also in the back of her head, she's like, I'm the best around. <laughs> Nothing's going to ever keep me down. Like, <laughs> this is why I need to be like, doing yep. this stuff more often. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, you can see that there are another thing, uh, potions of mana. So uh, that's a new thing added <laughs> in case uh, you wanted to refresh your spell slots, you know, during Oh my god. Oh, okay. I thought you said potions of banana. I no, 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 no. I I said, uh, potions, I sorry, so no. There are no, there are no potions of banana here. There's only potions of mana. I'm sorry. It I'm calling the essence of Nathaniel still. Yes, still but down. I'm calling it. I'm calling it a, bo a potion of banana now. It's a banana. It's a banana. <laughs> potion of banana. Anyway. <laughs> um. Well, I could get a greater one. If you would gold. like. Uh, because I trust your calculating um, and trust you to just like add and subtract your gold amounts, you can just like choose when it's not your mm -hmm. turn what you would like to buy. I would appreciate that just because like I might take some time to like look over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that then. Uh, Perfection. In the meantime, let's say so, after you were done buying your potions, what else do you want to do? Well, that's all I really needed to do. Yeah, that um, was it. <laughs> yeah, I might like look over at Scorpio who has joined me like in, with my like bags of supplies mm -hmm. <laughs> and just be like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to go run and return to your level or do you want to go like wander around? What is your game plan? Well, I do think it would be nice to meet up with her. Uh, if you'd like, you could tag along. I heard she's going to meet up with an angry old dwarf. Oh, hmm. Does she, is she going to deal with the dwarf in a certain way or is she going to try and actually like, you know, not use her sword? She, he scratches his chin a little bit. <laughs> you know, I can never tell sometimes. Would you I... like me to go? Mind if I tag along? I, I don't give a shit. Sure. All right. And he starts and besides, to... Besides, this is one of... <laughs> yeah. She's like, as they're walking, she's like, besides, this Sorry. is going to be one of those steady days I'm pretty much going to assume. Hmm. We just got a lot of... of well, uh... Extra shenanigans, and I'm betting anything that Mr... Uh, <laughs> Mr. I don't like to socialize. It's going to be in his room all day. <laughs> Might be for but the best. I very much appreciate your company with me. Oh, I course. usually have to do this all by myself. Of course. Yeah, I'll lead the way. I've had a run-in with the old coot a few times. And he starts to lead you to Umlems. Yay! She's just jazzed. Next, uh, Enoch, after, your, uh, after you've done kind of paying your respects to your mother, uh, where would you, what would you have done? Uh, most likely Serene would have returned to the church. Uh, I, I would have gone back with her because mm -hmm. 
I am interested in what was left over via the designs that she had. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Or what Siatora had. Okay, yes. Yes. You can see that she has various different uh, blueprints, designs, and some unfinished constructions as well. You see that there are a few things for uh, Modrons. You do see that there is a design for an automatic auto-targeting uh, kind of cannon of some kind. <laughs> okay, Mom. <laughs> All right. And various other just like unfinished and scratched out. You can see that the more recent sheets of paper have scribblings and scratching that it looks like the designs were initially finished, but you can't make out what they are because of the scribbling and scratching tearing like as if just like they were ruined. They were once finished, but they're now ruined. But yes, you do find Mojans and the auto-targeting cannon. Kind of look over these, put like one hand over my eye. And I look over to Serene. What does that look to you? Well, um, that's... Wait, which one are you showing her? Uh, the, the cannon. The cannon? Well, yeah. it looks like a siege unit. Yes. And I kind of pulled the design closer to my eye. That, that looks like a firing pin. But not just... It's odd. I pull out the design for the Modron. And... Currently, like, inspecting all the designs and kind of flipping through them. Would you like to give me an investigation? Yeah. Actually, give me your investigation stat. Rather than a roll. Uh, I mean, plus two. Just plus two? Okay. Looking through it, you think you can probably salvage some some of the designs uh, of these for your new design, as it is, from what Alter said, unfinished. Alter must confer, and I kind of, like, do, like, a mental scan of all these designs, just, like, you can see kind of provide him an image. When you look over the scratched out designs, you feel a sharp pain in your eye and you can hear Alter screaming in agony as if he's in pain. And then okay. the pain stops for a bit. Ha ha ha. All right, this is not me thinking too hard, but if you're going to throw a fit, at least warn me. Those were mine. And she Yours. ruined them. <clears throat> okay. Listen. Like I said, you need to bring yourself down to a little bit more of a human level before you start acting so high and mighty. Look at this. And he's just beginning to show more and more of the designs. The sharp pain what goes through your head the again. Make a wisdom save. Okay. 20. 20. The sharp pain rings through, but you're all able to hold your com uh, composure. As you can see, flashes in your mind, memories that aren't yours, hands that aren't yours, fiddling with constructs, pushing things around, putting things together. But yes, you, you see flashes of memories in your brain as Alter sc screams in agony yet again. You can see these hands that aren't yours, both fleshy human hands that are writing, drawing these designs, and those same hands scratching them out, tearing them up, throwing them across the room. And I'm looking at Alter. I know it's anger-inducing, isn't it? What are you getting at? I think you're scared. You see a vision of Alter in a bright, white, blinding light in front of you as the entire church just kind of falls apart around you and you are standing on a singular spinning gear as he stands before you. Don't think you understand me, boy. You are scared. I know you are. Because that's what survival dictates, isn't it? 
He's sitting here talking to me about how you are doing your best to keep us alive. Survival dictates scared. And you're afraid. So what are you afraid of? Me? He charges towards you and flies through into you, fists forward. And you feel a punch into your chest before it's blocked. <laughs> And he is pushed back by some sort of unknown barrier. What? He tries to push through once again. And you can see that the symbol of Erethus stops him. As your vision fades and you wake up on the floor of Serene kind of fanning you with her sleeves. E Enoch, are you okay? How many jury members are still around? Uh, strewn about the city. Uh, renounce their titles. I'm the only one left. Any materials? A few. Yes. I'll, I'll go get them. Without hesitation, she gets up, goes into the back room, and pulls out what there, what there is. Various different metals, woods, and a few tools, wires, springs and gears, as usual. We need more. Uh, th this is all we have. A anything else you need you could possibly be found in the market. And he pulls out what coinage he still has left and takes her hand. We need metal and we need wood. Real good wood. If you can find that. Head out and bring it back to me. How much money do you give her? Uh, <laughs> as much as I have left. And that is eight pieces of gold. Eight gold pieces. <laughs> Amazing. All right. You That's hand her I your... I got because, because nobody gives them gold. Well, there, it's a big city. There's plenty of jobs that you could take. But, yep, you hand her the eight gold pieces, and she looks a little concerned and holds the pouch tight. I'll try to see what I can find. And before she leaves, I grab her hands once again. Don't worry about me. There are a lot of problems going on. <laughs> Enoch, and I've lived in Chester City for quite a long time. I know. Also, uh, I wanted to acknowledge something back at the graveside. You see that she averts her gaze to you. I know by providence of the gods there are certain means that allow you to do what you thought you, you could have done. And to be honest, while I detest its nature, the magic for what it is, I think what you did was right and what was kind. She turns to you and you can see her eyes start to water up and she just covers her mouth with her other hand. It brings her closer. Don't ever taint your soul for what you think I want versus what I need. She she shakes her head. No, no, not at all. I there are changes coming to Belkinus, Enoch. And I want to help those changes happen without bloodshed. And she just looks to all the the empty chairs in the church without more violence. Good. You remind me a lot of a friend I made. It's along the way. For all intents and purposes, if my mother died with her secrets, let there be her secrets. She takes a moment to consider this. Nods. She seems a little bit unsure of herself. I'll go get your things. Thank you. She heads out of the church. And what are you going to do in the meantime? Looking over the plans once more. Dead for 17 years. Always ready to take me to school, huh? Let's see what you got, old lady. <laughs> and he claps his hands together and he goes to the back of the workshop. Hardware mode. Hardware mode. Okay, we will return to hardware mode. Yep. As next...
is Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, as you are studying and, you know, you've sent Cyril and Julius on their way, you hear uh, about an, uh, a little while later, you hear a knock at the door and a familiar voice. Mr. Gainsby, I have uh, finished your task. Hmm. Just one moment. <laughs> I'm going to scoop up all my things, throw it in the drawer, go to the door. Yep. Look through the people. If there is one, I don't believe there is. <laughs> well, there's right here, the hobgoblin. I'm going to, like, open up the door ever so slightly, just so that he can only see my eye. Yep. You can see that he's got some folded garments in bright yellow with a hat on top. Uh, it took a little while. You said you didn't want to see a single stitch out of place. And uh, I tried my best. And as best I could, I looked it over, making sure not a single stitch out of place. I slowly creep open the door. Very good. And what of the other two? They should have went to you before they left. Uh, yes, they did. They said they were going to investigate a little bit more, learn about the protectors and what what. Right, yes, the protectors. In fact, if I remember correctly, I wanted to accompany them. They have gone, though. Oh, In did you? Uh, may I send a message of sending? Yes, please, let them know that I would like to seek an audience with the protectors. I an audience? Think. Sir, they are very dangerous. Do you know the extent of their plans? I look right at Rahir. <laughs> he, he takes a, a few steps back as if he was, like, punched in the stomach. Uh, y yes, sir. Uh, right away, sir. Right. Ah, uh, and Rahir, I say as I, like, unfold the coat and look it over. Yes, Mr. Gainsby? I roll investigation. Is there a stitch out of place? <laughs> uh, your investigation is eight. You can see that the entire thing is pristine except for a single tiny little weave at the tip of your hat that was cut off by Thorn that is just <gasps> put the wrong direction. Bastard. Oh I, no, this kid's gonna die. Uh, gonna I look at your entire character. <laughs> so I, I do a once over on all of my clothing uh, and without looking at him and I, I say, you did a perfect job right here. Whew, you can see that he, he lets out like ten times the breath of his lungs. <sighs> Yes, Mr. Gainsby. I, I go into my room before he says that. He's not. Oh. He does not get to respond. To <laughs> <life>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you're going to wait for the other two again. So my hope is that he will send a sending to them. Right. Then they will respond to it, and I will know where to meet up with them. Yes. So that okay. I don't have to wait inside of this room anymore. Yeah. I, I do. Right, right, I right. remember last session that like I had said, "Hey, take me with you." But if I remembered incorrectly, that's fine. We'll just... I, yeah, that, well, if you did, yeah. then it's good, good to remind me because um, my memory Not is foggy deal. as well. Uh, yes, he would have sent a sending and he would have told you where to meet up and uh, the certain directions. And you would know now the a secret passage to the long abandoned, long, uh, no longer in commission Warforge factory of Chester City. Oh, boy. Oh. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. And you are free to uh, meet with both Cyril and Julius at any point that you find convenient. I am going to gather all of my things. So mm -hmm. all of the necromancy information that is staying on my person is going under in back into my, like, secret pouch in my coat. And then I'm going to have Rahir, if possible, send another sending to Renee to have her meet me with the robots in the robot place. Okay, yes, and uh, he will do so. Renee, you now know the directions to the now abandoned Warforge factory of Chester City. And I'm going, uh, can I, do, do I know what time? Are you going there like ASAP, ASAP? That's my intention. It was okay. There well, more as soon as I heard like that, it's like Nathaniel needs you, probably immediately just look at Roscoe for a little like, change of plans if you want to go and meet your, your love. Um, I have a few obligations, unfortunately. Work. <sighs> Oh, uh, all right then. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. And you. I don't know how she's going to react to anything. It's a little bit uh, touchy at the moment. Just give her lots of, lo of love. especially. If oh, and uh, not to mention, um, ba -ba -ba -bum, since you're going to see her before I do, she like pulls out uh, the po potion that she bought, because I have decided what I wanted to buy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the potion of oil affinity. 
Ah, the weapons. affinity oil. Good, good. Yeah, because that's going to be one of the half price things I get. Mm -hmm. So I would like, could you could you send that with my love to Luna? Could you get that? I, I don't mean for you to be an errand boy, but I am now an errand girl, so. Well, I'm out of a job and errands were all I was good for before, so it's like I never even left work. Perfect. <laughs> Right. I will. I'll make sure to let you and Luna know where where we we convening. <laughs> okay. Yes. So you will part with Scorpio, who heads back. With, how many? Did, how many did you buy? Did you just buy one? I only bought one. I put it in the um, chat. So I put, I bought one oil affinity. I got two greater healings, and then I also got the oil of slipperiness and a awesome. basic banana banana spell. Awesome. Uh, Nathaniel, since it's still your turn, is there anything else? Uh, you do on the way, or if you would like, you can simply meet the other three at the abandoned Warforge factory now. Uh, how interesting that there are three of them. Well, because I, Renee ooh, and yeah, no, Julius I know, and Sam. I, know. I understand. When I arrive there, I will be very confused. Uh, in the So here is a small question, then. Mm -hmm. In order for me to do something with my turn other than this. Right. Uh, unless you would like me to just do this, because this is going to take a while, and... That could be my turn. Uh, like, I'm fine with Renee doubling up on me. That's perfectly fine with me. Is the church... Because there were two churches in here of... of fuck, the, the god. So there... The yeah, god. there are... There's the Church of the Eternal. Uh, there's right. the Temple of the Eternals, which is a commercial, you know, temple for various different gods. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the right. Church of Erethus, which is very run down, kind of tucked into a corner of the city. Right. And the Temple of the Eternals are the ones that... Uh, potentially caused Enoch's mother to die somehow. Mm, I guess you'll have to find out. Right. Well, that, that's, that's, my, that's some of the rumors that you've right. heard from the two investigating. Right. Is like some of the people at the uh, Temple of the Eternals have accused Enoch's mother of being a heretic. Possession. Yeah. And possession. possession yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Are either of those churches on the way to here? To where I'm going. To yes, the Temple of the Eternals is on the way. Fantastic. I would love to pay a short visit. Okay, yes. Uh, you do. And you see that out front, you are greeted by a Warforged. And he kind of lets you in. Hello, welcome to the Temple of the Eternals. Would you like to pay forth for your sins? <laughs> no. <laughs> My sins are going to go unpaid, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, would you like to pay tribute to some of the Eternals online? Online? Uh, on the lineup, rather. Not online, like internet online. Poor choice of words on my part. What? Ah, yes, good. <laughs> Let me character. just use my fairy <laughs> you like to log in to free yourself of your sins, <laughs> sir? Can you prove you are not a robot? You just hear, like, the dial-up sound as you're, like, connecting to your sins? Sorry. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> on space line. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am not on official business, luckily for you, but I was wondering if you would direct me towards a higher-ranking member of this church. I would like to speak to someone of authority. Hmm, and he just, like, leans his head on his fist. Well, you can talk to me. I don't see why you have to go talk to anybody who's higher up. My eyebrow twitches just for a moment. What would you like to know, sir? You, I apologize. We haven't been properly introduced. My name is Nathaniel Gainsby. What's yours? Hmm. I'm Corvin. And I suppose that you operate this place very well, Corvin. Can you just get to the point, sir? I've got a very busy day. My face betrays no emotion, <laughs> but I am having a lot of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I believe that I would like to pray now. Thank you. I... have think I can do this on my own. I'll Very own. well. That'll be five gold pieces. Five gold pe- <laughs> <laughs> Very well. I hand him the gold. Okay, you hand him the gold. He o opens the door to let you inside, and you can see that it is a very- very ornate interior with long halls leading to various different gods and pantheons, and each one is attended to by a, an employee who is uh, seems to be taking prayer and, uh, you know, saying what sounds like very routine chants and prayers to these people before taking pouches of gold from them and letting them inside. Jeez. 
Uh, I mumble something under my breath along the lines of, Perhaps I will come back here in official business to investigate this place for robbery. Uh, and then I will walk inside. Okay. You walk inside, and you can see that there, uh, one attendee uh, comes up to you and speaks up. Hello, good sir. Are you, uh, are you here to pay tribute to your gods and such? Oh, of course I am, yes. Uh, but before I do that, I was wondering if I could speak to somebody of a higher authority. Ah, I am a priest here. My name is Rendham. Nice to meet you. He extends a hand. Oh, very good. I will shake it. Yep. You see, it's a very nice. firm, soft handshake. You can see that he moisturizes as well. Well, uh, I think I can find my way around here when it comes to finding my own personal guards, but a friend of mine, very close and personal to me, was... Uh, Worshipping a different god that I had never heard of before, despite having come to this church very many times. I believe the name of the god was Arathis. Oh, yes, Arathis. Uh, well, the segment of Arathis uh, split off many years ago, formed their own church down the way. Not got a lot of funding, unfortunately. Well, yes, that is unfortunate. Well, if you would uh, like to pay tribute to her, you can go down that way, but... Uh, I assume if you wanted to, you would have went there already. Any reason you come here instead? Uh, well, I had heard that the church had split off, and I was wondering uh, what could have caused such a thing. You see, it's a bit of a difficult thing, having a friend that worships a religion that doesn't go to the same church. We have to all very often separate, and I would much rather not have to do that. Not to think that you are going to somehow be reconvening in the future, but I am curious as to how the split happened in the first place. I'm going to need you to make a combination of religion and persuasion. Oh, good. All right. Persuasion. I can you need do to, that. You, you need religion and persuasion because oh, no. you need to show that you are truly a religious man. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not, though. I'm so not. No, just lean in really close. I've, I am a man God of damn. faith. God. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. Finally, so. the nat one curse goes to somebody other than me. Brave, I don't. I don't think we need to worry about that brave. persuasion. Um, I, I basically came in here and said, yes, I would like to worship a god. <laughs> How do you do, fellow priests? Yeah. Somewhere. He had to fail somewhere. <laughs> Boy, do I love Jesus and his <laughs> commandments. Oh, so, God. when do we get the crackers and the wine? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't you worry. can see. We can, so we can read some of those palms. You can see that he, he looks you up and down at you trying to convince him that you are a religious man and you wish to pay tribute. And he, he gives you like a head tilt of like, uh-huh. <laughs> well, Same. good sir, it, uh, if you well know your history about, uh, it seems like you don't, about our good lord of building and progress, Erethys, is that a long time ago, a priestess by the name of Ciatoro, was a bit of a heretic around these parts. She started spouting nonsense, belittling the other gods, and then decided to split off on her own. What could have caused that, if the churches were together for so long? Well, I just told you. Heresy. She had communes yes. with otherworldly beings, not following to the letter of the Temple of Eternals. Communes with otherworldly beings, you mean gods. Well, her god, specifically. But other worshippers of Arathis, they did not have this problem. Listen, sir, if you are not here to pay tribute, there's not much I can do for you. I'm going to take a very deep sigh. And I'm going to hold up. I'm, er, I'm not going to hold up anything I'm going to say. What do I have to give you? Well, running such a temple does require upkeep, so perhaps yes, a little bit of coin could help. And he's just kind of looking around, just kind of uh, rubbing his hips a little bit, making sure nobody's looking. Yes, I understand coin. Fine. I'm going to take ten gold out of my pocket and put it in his hand. I'm going to say, here, use this to buy some bread that doesn't taste like cardboard. Hmm. He leans, no. he leans in. He pockets the coin and leans in. I heard that in order to strengthen the Church of Erethus, she communed this celestial being after fighting with one of her own priests 
he was also communing with the same Celestial. And after their fight, took to him. Took to him? Which one? The one she was fighting with. Another priest of Erethus. They didn't agree after they moved to Belconis. Wanted to run things differently. And so, it seemed the Celestial took to the priest instead. Uh, and afterwards, after the big argument, and she split off, he was never heard of again. Methinks she killed him. Yes, and what was the name of this priest? His name was Thurm. T-H-Y-R-M. Thurm. Yeah, I can really feel a Y in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Traveled here and founded the Church of Erethus along with Seatora. Along with a few others as well. But it seems they've been spread around the kingdom. And was there any particular thing that Thurm and Seatora did that enabled this communication with a higher being? He holds out his hand expectantly. I'll give you ten gold. That, ought, that at least goes for three questions. Give me a persuasion. Damn it! <laughs> I don't know, sir. Those uh, windows do need a bit of washing. Yes, they do. And I'm going to give him another gold. Fine. Well, from what I gathered, it seemed that Thurm's methods were a little bit, um, extreme. Very evangelical. Black and white. You were either with him or you were against him. That doesn't explain how he was able to contact other beings. Ah. Uh, on that front, I think that's... Even all the gold in the world won't get that information, because I don't know it. Hmm. These methods, were they documented somewhere? Can't say they are. It's all hearsay, rumors. Any documentation has been thrown out. They don't want us to acknowledge that sort of past. Leaves a bad mark on the Church of the Eternals. Do you think that the other church is going to, would have such documentation themselves, then? Not sure. You best look for yourself. Very well. All right, and this is going a little bit over time, so I'm going to say, right. uh, what is the I next... I was going to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your help. No. And then I'm going thank to you turn. for your patronage, sir. I hope you find the light of your gods. And I... <laughs> oh, certainly. I hope to find that light myself. I will step out of this okay. horrible place. <laughs> Next is Luna. Hi. You you find your way. So you're going to Umlems, yeah? Yes, I have a message to deliver. You walk into Umlems Smithery. You can see that it's a small, humble place, just like fit in between two larger buildings. You can see that there uh, is one person as you walk in uh, that seems to be finishing a transaction. Nods at him. It looks like a tree folk of some kind. Umlem uh, just thanks them, uh, takes their coin, hands them a very fancy-looking sword. They bid you adieu as they walk uh, around you through the door. And you can see Umlem, a very old-looking dwarf with splotches around his face, wrinkles about, and an eye patch. Let me show art of him. Ooh. Ooh. And there he is. Hey! Look at this man. Look at this guy. He's been through some shit. He sees you walk in and immediately, like, without skipping a beat, took you long enough to get here. I'm... I'm sorry? You're the girl that helped my daughter's little girl, yeah? Oh, yes, yes. I am. She Hello. wouldn't stop writing to me. When you see her, could you tell her to stop writing to me? <laughs> I actually wow. came to deliver... I actually came to deliver the message she gave me. That was uh, asking you to write to her, her more. He tilts his head back, like, almost like 90 degrees up into the sky. Ugh. All right, fine. It'll finally get her to stop. I do appreciate it, though. Makes her happy, and it makes sure that I still have grandchildren. <laughs> Your grandchildren are lovely. Of course. In fact, I'm so grateful, if you would like. I've got a few customers lined up, but... If you, uh, if you want, you can have one of my services on the house. Oh. The token of gratitude for helping my family. Oh, thank you. This, y you don't have to, really. I was happy to. I was happy to help. And, and I'm happy to lend this. Come on, at least. You and me have got nothing else to do in this 
body workshop. Well, I may come by later then. I have a different blade I might have you work on, mm. if that's all right with you. Very well. Uh, I'm so sorry to ask this. Um, have, does the name Vadran Icewind ring any bells to you? Hmm. Can't say it does. Sorry. Was he, <laughs> it's fine. Was he around during the war? Yes, he was my father, actually. He's a veteran. Hmm. Just trying to track down a f- uh, I'm trying to see who might have been in his platoon, that's all. Don't mind me. Uh, and I'm going to look over this real quick. Yep. Uh, you can see- also, you can see all the different services that he's got. He doesn't yeah. sell a lot of weapons. He sells just the basic ones, but he does do a lot of upgrading and such. Yeah, no, I'm looking at these, uh, I'm looking at these, these enchantments. He's got yeah. going on. And, and uh, you, you can do the same thing as Cammy. Uh, one, you, yeah. I'll say that retroactively we can pick what you paid for and bought. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I guess I would have just been prepaying, um, like pre establishing the service because I would have wanted it done on Absolution if possible. Yes, we can do that. Since that is my main sword. While browsing around, you also see a portrait kind of in a similar style to the one that you saw in. Gosh, I forgot her name. Uh, Helio, Heliolois. Heliolois's Hel Heliolois. house. And you can see that there's a portrait of Abigail hung up on the wall. <gasps> this is the Viscount's sister. He looks over. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I was in their platoon. Oh, I see. I see. Your, your daughter also had a portrait of the three sisters. I, I fought alongside them. Can I ask, ask something? Go ahead. What happened? to Abigail. Oh. He leans down in a seat and you can see that he's got a peg leg as he takes a By seat kind of around around the counter. By all means, you don't have to tell me if you do not wish to. I'm just no, no, curious. no. I think it's something most of the kingdom should hear considering. Okay. And she'll like, uh, like lean herself up against the counter or something to listen. I got to know him. The sisters. Sandrell was ever the leader, followed orders, protected her allies. Good woman. Mm -hmm. Kara, too. Mm -hmm. She was always nose deep in her books, always learning. She even played a small part in contributing to the general for intel on the enemies. And Abigail, she was a little shit she was. Playing pranks on the other soldiers. Once filled the sergeant's practice sword with sheaths of slime so that they'd splash their sparring partners during training. She was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Reckless girl got her bloody ear cut off from a blade dance. Mm. And I think that's why the kingdom don't like to talk much about it. She was all in, she was in all our hearts, and after she died, left a rift between the sisters. A lot of people like to contribute that to why the kingdom is the way it is now. What with the necromancers going around, and the constant strife. All because of those sisters. You'll never see people speaking about it out loud, but a lot of people like to attribute this to Chandrail as well. Whatever happened to Kara? She left. Not much really knows. Considering the spine of death, I think a lot of us can put pieces together. But nobody really knows. She left the kingdom. She was a prominent necromancer during the war, but I ain't one to make accusations. I see. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. No, no. <clears throat> he gets up from his chair, just kind of taking both arms to pick up. I should get back to writing that note then. I hate <laughs> the mail. So you'll, so you'll be back then. Come with some friends. Uh, I know you adventure a lot. You like to go around with your parties. Uh, potentially yes. Uh, before we leave the city, at least. Um, I'm having a sword of mine looked at, and it's the one I'd prefer you to work on. Very well. Thank you. And, uh, if you'd like, I can pass that message along to Helios to maybe write a bit less. Please do. As much <laughs> as I sometimes do write letters, she always wants to meet better in person. Herein is a better. Is there a reason that you don't go see her? Uh, I just want her to leave her to her own devices. She's been under my wing far too long. She needs to find her own path. I think she's found that already. Oh, good. Raising two incredibly bright children. Perhaps she just wants to see her father again. He looks down I a bit. 
Mm. Some old habits will stay habits. <laughs> Whatever it's worth, I do plan. I will be making fairly routine trips to that area, so should you ever need anything delivered, just let me know. You talked about you a lot, but I never never really wrote your name. Uh, Luna Icewind. Luna Icewind. Well, thanks for paying me a visit, Luna. Of course. Of course. Anytime. And uh, she'll, like, give a, like, a pleasant nod and start to head out. He pulls out a sheet of paper and you can see him grumbling as he starts to write. <laughs> Luna looks maybe just a little bit too proud of herself with that. <laughs> And as you exit out, you can see that uh, Scorpio meets you just in time as well. Oh, Luna, oh. finished already. I was just delivering a message. Uh, he, uh, he would notice that Absolution is not on my back, which is incredibly yep. unusual. He, he does notice, but, and you can see that on his face, he's actively trying to avoid the topic. <laughs> I, uh, having something looked at, so I thought I'd come back later to actually have some work on my blades done. Whew. Oh, all right. Oh, that's good. Where did where'd you come from? Where's Renee? I thought Renee went with you. Uh, I think she got some sort of message from your uh, bright yellow friend. They you seem to like to work together a lot. Yes, they're a, they're they're an interesting team. Um, well, I have something I have to do um, regarding uh, tracking down. What the hell was his name? Clayton. 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 Yep. Uh, tracking down a fellow named Clayton for... Hmm? Well, you've got a job then. Uh, well, uh, exchange of services. I'm having my father's sword looked at um, mm. by... Forget the name, Sage Annabelle. Well, regardless, I think this is a good time to start practicing working together, don't you think? <laughs> I think so, yes. I'll come along then. Of course, of course. Come on. Yeah, and you two start to do your first task together Woo! and uh because the task is going to take a little bit longer than you have i'm going to go to renee if that's okay that's all good all good go on all right renee, i assume that you are going to meet up with nathaniel and the two others yeah yes this was my plan all along to double up on somebody else's turn haha -ha. <laughs> okay and yes you meet up at a very vacant part of the city you can see you had to go through like several shady alleyways and kind of climb through some debris where there are no people, no guards, no no one. And you can see that there is a massive lump of debris with a human and a tiefling there and Nathaniel as well. I'm going to say, Nathaniel, you wait, actually, Nathaniel, were you going there or were you going to the Church of Erethus? No, I was going here. I told everybody to come here. I'm not going to make them wait. Oh, OK. That would be unbecoming of me. Thanks, Nathaniel. Yep, yep. And you can you uh, reach there, and you can see that the two are sitting on what look to be some oh. innocuous piles of debris. Oh, you two again. And you can see that uh, the human just, like, lifts up both arms in kind of like a karate motion. Careful, lady. We've learned a lot of things. Since and then you can, the, the tiefling interrupts and just puts his hand over his, his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We work for you now. She just has a hand on her hip, like raising an eyebrow at the poor human, just being like, oh, she's just like, uh, oh, I'm really scared now. I'm downright terrified. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very impressive. Um, so I'm guessing that you are both here for the same reason that I am. I can only assume. Yeah. Boss, are you there? Uh, I'm going to, like, arrive just now, and I will, like, kind of... It with a bit of hurry in my step, as if I was annoyed by something recently, and I will show up and I'll say, Apologies for my lateness, I had to come to Jesus moment. Who? The fuck did you need Jesus for? Ah, uh, not for much. I don't mm. know if Jesus is in this world. <laughs> I, had to, I had to come to our... What the fuck I, is Jesus? <laughs> I, had a, I had to come to our facsimile of Jesus moment. <laughs> our fantasy facsimile. Oh, boy. Anyway, so why exactly do you... You need this heal exactly? To I had to come to like Frodo exactly, exactly. moment. Come to Frodo moment! <laughs> I apologize. Share okay, the load! Again. Anyway, anyway, yes. Uh, you see that uh, Julius kind of lifts a hand to greet you. Hey, boss. Right, I'm going to not t shake his hand. I don't know what relationship he thinks No, he's have, just, he's just wave, will... like a little greet wave. Oh, okay. Uh, I will nod back to him. And the protectors are aware that we're arriving, or are we going to surprise them? 
No. Wait, wait, wait. The Zip Protectors? Yes, that they're in the city. Oh, yeah, I know they're in the city. I just stopped one of them from robbing someone. You did? Who? Yes. In order to get the Witch Deckers a really nice discount. Speaking of, she like pulls out her <laughs> one of the greater potions and gives it over to him. Uh, I'm gonna take it and look back at her. This is going to be awkward. Right. Uh, that's we what are... I'm expecting, honestly. I'll put this into my pocket, into my. I've pocket. had stranger mornings. Right. I'm going to need to do most of the talking. I've been preparing this for a little while. Uh, I will need you to back my play. It's going to be a little bit strange. Oh well, I uh, I never said that they're meeting here. You know, uh, I just know that they're planning something, and uh, that they've been covering it up. So, Cyril? Uh, yeah, sure thing, man. And they both start to dig through the debris, and you can see that there is a hidden hatch under it all. Oh, wow, so classy. You have taken us to their secret base. Uh, not exactly. This is the abandoned Warforge factory that they plan to do something. Uh, something. You have taken us to their current operations under well a secret thing that they are doing in a place understood this still works for us in that case i think that i will defer to you julius you seem to have a very good idea of these things uh, what, what, what do you mean i mean i would like you to lead the way she like leans over <laughs> like to julius this is the moment where you show you're not going to fuck up and actually take your own initiative time you can see that Cyril is chuckling under his breath, and Julius shoots him daggers, as a dagger-like stare, and Julius just... <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, Cyril. I didn't ask you to show initiative yet. <laughs> just... <laughs> and that Renee can't help but have a little, like, knife cat smile, like... <laughs> oh, man. And Julius just opens the latch, it creaks open. You can see there's a stairway down. All right, come on in. Oh, perfect. Going down into a little dark tunnel. Mm. I this very often. Violence. I know. <laughs> and I'll motion to for Cyril and Julius to go forward first. Yep, they go in, and uh, Cyril just, uh, his voice echoes throughout this very metal uh, kind of stairwell. Well, uh, look on the bright side, boss. If we betray you, you could just always mind spike us again. And uh, Julius just kind of baps him on the shoulder. What? He could. <laughs> Uh, you're not really... Honey, you need to actually... When, when the take initiative thing actually happens to you, you might want to start with actually having the ability to, like, you know, have the confidence to do it first. Uh, just showing my faith, ma'am. I, I appreciate that, but also, holy shit, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> yes, I won't lie, I put you two together because you had previous experience working as friends. Which but means you I'm would probably to... work together for, for onward from that. But now I'm beginning to realize that perhaps you should work a day job. I would like that after this is all over. Ooh. Oh, don't you worry. Nothing nothing bad will happen to you so long as you follow my orders. Uh, he, he just like creaks his head back and he has looked like he just stared death in the face. And they lead you down the stairwell and you can see that it leads far, far down. Kind of like... A very long flight of stairs before you see a massive vertical hole like like an entire football field across and it leads like a vertical silo all the way straight down with various different catwalks uh, and rails and steam pipes and different kind of like pools of molten metal that are glowing currently what? yes what do you think they're trying to make i imagine warforged that's what this place was built for originally during the war they wanted to use robots to fight necromancers it's hard to pick them back up mm. but then why have they started are they trying to like raise quote unquote their own army Perhaps the protectors are having a hard time finding new recruits. Or perhaps they're having a hard time dealing with the spine of death and have resorted to old methods. Either way, it won't change anything if we can't find them. Do you I'm think anyone is down at the bottom? Most likely. 
I would like to roll perception to look around to see if I can't find where anybody is. If I'm in this giant silo, <laughs> I'm just going to do a big scan. Uh, <laughs> yes. Give me your passive perception. 20. 20. You can look around. This place has been recently used, but from the looks of it, checking out the various, like, kind of wear and tear on the stuff, it has only been slightly tampered with so far. No one's actually activated the place just yet, but it's just kind of... You can tell from the methods and things that are on, whoever was here has been messing with stuff to make sure that it still works. Right. But I don't think anybody has... Nope. Doesn't seem like there's a sign that anybody's here right now. No, wow. the only echoing that you hear is the echo of the low rumble of molten metal. And so what would you like to do? Well, given that none of them are here right now, we can't exactly talk to them. But even if we don't know why they want this place, the fact of the matter is that they do. Which means it is within our best interest to make sure that they can't do that until we have a conversation. So, let's go through these machines and see if we can't find integral pieces of them to take back home with us, just for the time being. I will say one thing, boss, uh, Julia speaks up. This sort of stuff is way too high concept for the protectors. They're usually small, small jobs, you know. This sort of stuff, it takes way more planning than any of us could put together. Any of us? Well, it, I mean, when I used to be with them. Right. Well, luckily... Is there anyone you particularly would work with? Uh, not that I know of. Mm. It's just very strange, out of left field. We usually do small jobs with low stakes. Not a lot like to lose. Like stealing a cult? Say again, Renee? Uh, like, like stealing a supply cart? Yeah, like stealing a supply cart. Mm. <laughs> are you sure that these are the protectors in charge of this place, then? I know for certain. Because I saw their lead coming in here. Earth Genasi girl. Uh, what's her name? Castilia? Yeah, her. Oh, merde. She, like, <laughs> turns over to the table. That is who I saw earlier this morning. Do you think you can find her again? Mm, not met, impossible, but definitely not the easiest. You can send to her, correct? Yes. Well, like I said, let's find important pieces of this machine, or these machines, and then have a conversation with them later. All right. I'm going to start snooping around. Okay, start various... snooping around. Are you going to salvage various different yep. parts and pieces then? Yes. Snoopers going to snoop. My goal is to find like pieces that look valuable slash, ex like, slash rare. Something that if I take it out, the machine's not working, and it's probably really hard to find another piece for. <laughs> okay. Investigation? Yeah, probably investigation. Yeah, yeah. You can give me an investigation for that. Okay, wow. looking around, wow. checking the pieces, you can see that there are various different kind of power sources in the chest of these various Warforged that you t take out. You get three Warforged power sources. I actually... That would be a... Tw actually, it wouldn't be a 23 because... No, it would. Uh, that's 23 because my passive investigation from Observant makes my... Uh, uh, my, like, uh -huh. minimum roll higher. Oh, shit. Is that investigation? Right, cool. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, you can get <laughs> three... We're gonna call them Warforged Souls, because that is what they're called, uh, nomenclaturally. They're not literally souls, but that's what powers up the Warforged. Okay. They're little, small, kind of orb, metal orbs that have a dim, arcane glow to them. And these are things that if someone tried to operate this machine... Without like, it, it would not would, start. Yeah, these things would be missed, certainly, though. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, I love that. Yep. And All you right. can see that there are kind of along this path that you have gone, this catwalk, where you can see below you as well the various, like, layers of catwalks. You can see that there are rows of worn down and broken and unfinished warforged as well. Just husks, not barely even, barely even, uh, puppets. Tell me, C Ciro, do you ever think it's very interesting how, when you look at the lifeless warforged around here, it's hard to tell whether they are dead bodies, 
The body is waiting to become alive. Ah! Uh, whoa, 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 Julius, what's he mean by that? What, what do you mean by that, sir? Well, Warforged are not people. They don't grow normally. Well, they are people, but not initially. They start out as machines. And then once dead, they are machines once more. It's very interesting how you can never tell one from the other. You can see his eyes are just darting back and forth, kind of like between Julius and you. He does not know how to comprehend this, or what to take from this. In any case, we have what we came here for. Once we leave this place, I will have you cast Sending so that we can tell them where we want to meet. And then we can finally have this conversation that I've been dying to have. You want to oh, meet with the protectors? Yes, that was what the whole point of this was. All right. Well, uh, I guess me and Cyril can stake out the place. Wait for them to come here. You can go do your business in the meantime. If you want to put yourselves at risk, but now that we have these things, I imagine they're going to want them back. And once they get a message in their brain telling them exactly where to, they'll, they'll arrive. I'm sure of it. Uh, that's true. I just wanted to make sure maybe we could mitigate some of the damage. She's not going to be happy when she sees you've been tampering with her plans. Well, then if she wants to wreck this place even more, that's her prerogative. We're not using it. We're just preventing her from using it. I think she will be very happy after we have our talk. But don't worry about her sentimentality. Worry about mine. And right now, I would like to leave. All right. After you. All right. Uh, Thank real you, boys. Quick, bef bef right before we leave, just as we're going... Uh, I know I wasn't, like, I I've rolled to, like, look around the place, but is there any chance that they have left behind any, like, information as to what they're trying to do here? I'm gonna uh, take your inv uh, your investigation, your passive investigation, uh, sure. that you can tell that they are absolutely trying to start the Warforged factory to create Warforged. Um, right. Intent is going to be another thing that you can't tell unless you yeah. talk with them. No problem. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. But you, you can in tell case, for sure they're trying to restart the factory. In that case, fantastic. Uh, I, we can leave this factory once we are far enough away. Yep. Uh, I can I can tell uh, Renee to meet us. or I would like for them to meet us at the... Fuck, I can't remember the inn I'm staying at. Uh, the Unwritten Shores? Yes, I'm going to say there. And, okay. But I am going to say the room number across from mine. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Renee, what what message do you send to Castilia? Well, before I send it, I want... Nathaniel, what exactly is your crazy plan here? Oh, I'm going to... What is the proverb? I'm going to deal with two birds with one stone. The spine of death has been a very big issue for us. And I would like to get more information about them. In addition, the protectors have been less than agreeable since we've met them. To say my the hope, least? My hope is that I can negotiate some sort of agreement between us to have them investigate the spine of death for us while we remain in Chester City. And then, whether they return with information or die, we have solved the problem. So you want us to stay here another day? If need be. Or hmm. we continue on towards our eventual goal of dealing with the spine of Earth with the Black Veined Queen. But regardless, we'll have more information coming out of it, or we will at least have the protectors gone. All right. I don't really know how this will go, but I trust you. Very good. Okay, Renee, what is your sending send message? Send Castilia. Darling Castilia. <laughs> my boss and I collected something from your little pet project. If you want it, meet us at room, whatever room it is that's across from Nathaniel. Um, let me look at the end name again. At the Unwritten Shores. You got three words left. Bye tonight. Kisses! <laughs> <laughs> you hear and You hear <laughs> You hear a voice back. Uh, balls to that. I'm going balls to do to this with or without whatever it is you did. Oh, merde. So your little plan, 
Uh, it probably has a little bit of a snag. She doesn't give a fuck. I'm sorry. She doesn't give a fuck. She said she's going to go through with her plan whether or not she has what the, whatever it is that was in the world for Jellia. So we might be on a little bit of a time crunch now. Sorry, this was the sending, effectively. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in the pocket of people like me, down on their luck, you right. see? I took the warfers that you're trying to fall. <laughs> anyway. She's going where? She, uh, did she say anything more other than I'm doing this with her without you? Yep. What'd she say? Oh, no, sorry. The, sorry, uh, as in, no, she didn't say anything more. She said, balls to that. Oh. I'm going through with my plan. Okay, with yeah. So she's just yeah. like, I... Uh, she didn't say anything other than that. She just what? said she's going through with it, whether or not she had the the things necessary. Did she have you? Did she have some plan with you that you? No. Didn't then I'm not exactly sure what her plan is. In that case, how many? Are you willing to send another spell? It would not make me happy, but I can. <sighs> Never mind. Si are you sure? Damn it. I can't ask Cyril and Julius to... Cyril, Julius, do you know where we're here is? Uh, yeah, I could probably send a send in to him. Wait, you can send to people? Yeah, of course, I became a necromancer, I can cast. Mm. <laughs> I, I blink twice. <laughs> I mean, former necromancer, he holds up two hands, you know, before you hired me, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> what, you think they would bring on someone who couldn't cast any spells? Shut, shut, don't, stop. Stop incriminating yourself. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look... Uh, right. The sending spell. Does it actually let you know who is sending the message? They can hear your voice. That's how she knows it was me. Because we've already had the conversation before. That's how it works. Damn it. Julius, do you remember the very angry woman that was with us? Uh... She had two swords. Oh. A sleeveless shirt. Showed uh, off her biceps. What about her? I need you to tell her to get the cowboy and come to the old abandoned warforged house <laughs> as soon as she can. Angry cowboy! Apparently, there is going to be a very big problem here very soon. Ah, oh, you got it, boss. If, if possible, I would like you to disguise your voice as best you can. Hopefully she does not remember you. But there is no guarantee of that. And then... I would like the two of you to lay low for a while. You are both going to be very much wanted by these two people, and I do not have the time to explain that. They just both look at each other and just, just like nod with the knowledge that their life is now in your hands. Of course, once we're gone, you do not, you no longer need to worry, and you can go back to right here for any information. So, lay low for one day. All right, boss. Okay, Enoch, so you're tinkering away, you're crafting your next invention, yeah? Yes. My next two inventions, actually. Two inventions, okay. Yeah. Uh, one for my artificer, the one for my gunslinger. Okay, so... Because I I've been planning this. All right, okay. <laughs> and while you are, you are slightly interrupted by someone entering the door, and you hear heavy footsteps. Not the same ones as Serene. And looking up, who does he see? You see a tree folk of some kind who kind of stops in his tracks. I'll show it to you. And uh, he just uh, stops and holds up both hands. I'm sorry, was I interrupting something? Actually, no, perfect timing. Can you come over here for a second? I need you to lift this. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, then. He comes on around and helps you with your some of your task and makes things a lot easier, at least on the physical part of it. All right, lift, lift, with your knees, with your knees. Okay, uh, are you yep, Enoch yep, yep, Solomon? Yep. I am, and I slide some of the amber under this piece of metal. It's like, okay, down, 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 down. Are those bark hide beetle uh, wings? Used to be. All right, what do you want? You see that his face scrunches up a little bit at that. Hmm. Well, I heard that you are coming into town recently, and I've been keeping track of some of the things you've done around the kingdom, and I think you could be of good help for me. He extends and a hand looking out. Looking around the workshop, a bit busy. Well, whenever you have a chance, and he extends a hand out, Magnus, 
I'm an adventurer, like you. Traveling around, doing tasks. Okay. I, I guess you don't take his hand then? <laughs> no. No, he, he just sits there awkwardly. I don't know who you are. <laughs> and he, uh, he scratches the back of his head a little bit. Okay, maybe a bit forward. Have you ever heard of the Protectors? I take two steps back. Somewhere around, I don't know, five feet. Actually, yes, I have, and I pull out objection. Oh, oh he yes, he lifts both hands. Oh, I, I'm not a part of them. I promise. Insight. Go ahead. For once, me and Enoch are on the exact same wavelength. Nineteen. You uh, you see him. He he's holding both his hands up. He seems pretty genuine, and he he. It seems like you can tell from his intent that he is looking to work with you on something. Um, you can see that he doesn't look hostile at all. The only weapon he has is a single sword on his side, but uh, he has extended his arms far beyond, and you could easily outgun him if he reaches for it. So, by the way, I'm just down to, like, a straight sleeve of the shirt if he can see what is ever under all of this. Right, right, right. Like he he would notice the large scar where the metal and the arm attach, as well as like multiple different like wounds up and down his arms and along his collar. Okay, I uh, have heard that they are running amok in Chester City, and that I, having looking into you and your friends, know that you might want something that I know in return context I, I need context it is to my knowledge that you are traveling with the witch taker nathaniel gainsby is that right uh, kind of skeevy snake like or yellow uh, outfit bit of a bitch and i know that some of his tactics are underhanded and i would like to bring it to the light <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh divine providence it is and he holsters the gun he still keeps his hands up looks at him and wait well i can't ask for something if i don't give something it's kind of the fair trade around here i suppose which is why well, I want you to assist me. Why is it that you believe that Nathaniel Gainsby is such a dangerous man? I have reason to believe that he has employed necromancers. Okay, to be more specific on that kind of nature, I would have taken more preference to sending necromancers to their death. He finds it more profitable to send them to the guard. And if what you're saying is somewhere along that line that would make a lot of fucking sense he he tilts his head a little bit at the at the mention of sending them to their death i did not think i was going to work with a vigilante executioner listen when you do what i do on the border there's a lot of listen i'm just along a certain different kind of cut what uh -huh. i'm trying to say is that i i Never taken much preference to um, certain people that have made active and very terrifying advances on this country. Like executing and people I without a fair trial, and he just kind of squints his eyes at you and starts to lower his hands a little bit. <sighs> what I do is nasty business, I understand. I Don't see, get me wrong. then perhaps you are just as dangerous as he might be. Well, to be more accurate, things are starting to fall along different lines nowadays. Listen, I've been dealing with a lot more than, you know, just necromancers. I'm also dealing with a lot of, you know, personal issues. So if I can end up working those out, perhaps, just maybe, just perhaps, I might be able to help. He lowers his arms now down to his sides, and he has completely relaxed his stature. I don't think I do want to work with you anymore. 
Well, listen, if that's not something that you want to do, I'm understandable. I'm just not in the mood for killing anybody right now. He squint. Honestly. He tilts his head at that. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to kill necromancers right now, honestly. Well, if you that are better? in... Do you feel better? Well, if you are ever in the mood to stopping some bandits from running amok, oh, here's a, he hands that. you a kind of runic stone. Here is a sending stone. Oh, fantastic. I have I've some never information. Never actually seen one of these before. I have some information on him, and if you help me, perhaps I can help you. After you help me deal with the protectors, I can give you the dirt on Nathaniel Gainsby. But we have to talk about this whole, and he just kind of like lifts a finger up and down issues. Trust me, I, I got a parasite. It's like, a, you know, working it out. He just holds up one hand. I I don't think I want to know. Good. Uh, what's your name again? Magnus. Magnus. Good. All right. Nice to meet you, Magnus. Now, uh, if you would so kindly leave me to the rest of my work, and I will get back to you before the end of the day. Very well. How's that for that? Fantastic. And he pockets the stone. Hmm. And, uh... He goes back to hammering out the rest of the metal and lathing and uh, also creating his maker's mark. Okay. He leaves the church and, you know, right beside him, you you just hear a familiar voice. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, can I give you the good word of Aerithus? No, uh, no thanks. Uh, oh, okay. And Serene walks on in. I uh, right. got the best I could. Uh, it, it seemed like you had a bunch of metal on you already, so... I got some wood. You can see Serene has got a, a very sizable uh, plank of wood. It's about like almost as big as her um, and maybe like a oh, perfect. a foot in diameter and two feet in width. Oh, good. And uh, for the sake of a lot of other things, let's see how good your hands are. And he shows her the design for the buttstock. Oh, oh, I, I, I haven't made anything in many, many years. I, I don't know if I would be of much help. And he, he walks over. Hey, it's okay. You know, we got plenty of wood here and whatever mistakes get made. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, them, right? my, I, I just, please <sighs> promise me. Oh. She just puts both her hands on, on your shoulders. Know that I am following in the great builder. And that whatever I do is in her name. I see. And she slowly starts to take off her silk gloves. And you can see black veins leading from her fingertips up her hands. I have never raised. I have never raised. But I have dabbled. All in the name of the great builder, I promise. And I do want to help you. And he grabs hold of both the hands. And he brings them close. I've seen those who've had better intentions, like you. Is this what my mother fought for? She looks, she averts her gaze. You can always answer me honestly. If you were her truest confidant, is she doing this because she knew that this was the change that needed to come? She, she nods. They called her a heretic because she took in many that no one else would, including me. It grabs hold of the hands just a little bit tighter, but not violent. I made a promise. We are to carry on her work. She looks to you and you see tears rolling down her cheeks. Yes. If we're going to do good work. We need to know how to not only understand this and holding up the hands, but also how to work around it. We can grow. And that is a very recent revelation I've made. And why I'm so confident in why what I am going to make will change the nature of things for the you better. Hear, you hear Alter speak up in a 
quiet shout as if he's trying to shout as loud as possible, but it's as whispers in the back of your mind, as if he's being blocked out by something. No, we cannot. Her hands have been tainted. We will find a way around it. Always. That is what we do. In the name of the builder, we build around. We make the foundations. We grow stronger. Magic just reinforces, but it's what we make with these hands. And he grabs her gloves and he puts them back on hers. It's what we make with these that make us better, stronger. She smiles at you. Uh, y- yeah, but, but I, I do kind of need to take these off. It, it, I, I can't really oh, work with these so gloves. Sorry. Oh, fair enough. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pull, pulls it back off. Um, I, I'm almost done, but the, I, I just need a few more pieces to be put together. And so he begins to show the last of the designs. It's not too far off. Okay, she is going to assist you in this, and real quick, uh, give me a crafting check with advantage. Uh, Serene helping you out. Mainly because my crafting ability is my sleight of hand, so... Okay, show me the sleight of hand then. With the 15, you work away, hammering away, molding pieces, carving out wood. But something is deliberately sabotaging you. Alter. Meanwhile, next on the list is going to be Luna, since I'm, uh, I lumped Renee and Nathaniel together. I hope that's okay. Oh, oh, okay. And Luna, you get a message from an unfamiliar voice. Hello, uh, hello, my name is Rahir. I am an employee <laughs> of the witch taker, Nathaniel Gainsby. Are the, am I to understand that you are Luna? She's just like, I meant she was talking to... and talking. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he has to cast two now? <laughs> When you're casting that spell for the first time, can you imagine if you said it to the He has person? to know who it is to cast the spell! <laughs> ah! I feel like... I feel like Luna was just kind of like... She was, like just, she was walking and having a pleasant conversation and then just stops because this voice just entered her brain. Yes, and... Who are you and what the hell does Nathaniel want? You can you see that Scorpio stop what is Oh no, are you being advertised to? Oh these persons. <laughs> no, I think Nathaniel's trying to call me. He just had to use the most annoying voiced person ever to do it. Uh, be careful about giving out your name in the future. There are lots of people trying to sell things. Oh god. <laughs> God, no, I haven't, I haven't had to deal with that yet. What is this interior? Marketing. Hello, I'd like to talk to you about Modern your spell's extended marketing. warranty. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, no, never, never, ever, okay. He wants you to meet him at the Unwritten Shores. I will meet him after my job today? Uh, point of order. I, uh, at, if I remember correctly, I asked to meet everybody at the warehouse because yeah. if I, the oh shit yes the protector <laughs> is either going way, my, there yeah either way my 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 response is the same i'm on a job i will be there when i'm done <laughs> okay awesome possum great <laughs> so she's like rubbing her temples oh, God. so yes okay. you had the directions that were given to you to find creighton um, along the way, I will basically be explaining this much. I don't know if this is a sword's job. It's more just a persuading job. Uh, but swords are useful because apparently this person is doing what sounds like not so good things instead of helping the people of Chester City. Uh, I'm not really sure what to expect. So we should just be careful. Mm. Yes? Good deal. Can't. Might be good. There's a lot of help that needs going around. And you can see mm. that... Uh, Scorpio just looks around. You can see that there are a few homeless people just like as you walk by, just living on the streets, asking for alms. Is now I want to know, is this a, a recent spike in homelessness in Chester, or has this always been how it's been? You can give me a hit uh what's your history score? Uh not great. Um, but I've been here for a while. It's plus one. You can you can Hello, Mr. Well, having been familiar with the town, you would know that this has been a regular occurrence that, you know, there's uh, a lot, uh, you know, for as big of a city with the riches, there's, you know, for every 
rich uh, merchant that has made it in Chester City. There are about 20 who are struggling. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I'm not sure there's much anything about the city that can change thought. It's always been that way. It's terrible, but it's how it is. You reach the address as given to you, and it mm -hmm. is a quaint little place. Just a very humble looking uh, a kind of apartment, kind of in between some other buildings. It is an apartment room. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you trial us, my partner, for the first day, yes? Mm -hmm. And she'll kind of nudge him uh, with her elbow before uh, I guess we go up to knock on the door. Of course, my lady. <laughs> Yep. You knock, and you hear kind of a muffled, COMING! And a very young-looking fire genasi opens the door. You see, he's well-dressed. Oh! How dare you, they're adorable. Why is he so fucking hot? And this was made by Cammy. It's because he's a fire genasi. Okay, that explains everything. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Cammy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he creaks the door open a little bit. You can see his entire head. Uh, um, good day. Uh, yes, hello, I... Now, bringing... are, are you the new neighbors? Here, I've been cooking up some tea. It's a special oh, blend no. I made myself. Here, <laughs> come on in. I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. We're not neighbors. We're more messengers. Oh, uh, well, I don't get much messages. Who from? Oh, uh, say Janabelle. Oh. Uh, you can see that his smile just fades, like, almost instantly. Oh. Say Janabelle. Um, yeah, what did she say? She wants you to return. He starts to creak the door, like, closer to close a little bit. I, um, I don't want to. I, can I insight this to see if there, if it's dis dislike towards Sage Annabelle, or is it something, something a bit more sus? You can, g yeah, give me an insight. That's a twelve. Uh, you look him up and down, and you can see that there's concern on his face, and he can tell that you're looking over him. Uh, uh, listen, Miss Miss Annabelle, she's a right true beacon of hope for the people of Chester, but I, I can't do what she does. I, I mean, I can quite easily, in fact, but every day, hour after hour, Creighton, the king needs you to identify an artifact. Creighton, a new adventurer, needs this curse lifted. Creighton, help this person. This one needs a spell. This building needs mending day in and day out. I'm tired of it. Uh, Luna's expression that was kind of, like, you know, business friendly, it softens to one of, like, understanding. Like, I can understand that. Is there anything you want me to take back as a message then for her? You can tell her that I'd like to start living for me. May I ask what you moved to doing then? If you're not, if you're not pursuing divination? Making tea. Would you like some? <laughs> sure. I've been growing my own herbs. Here, come in, come in. And he leads you in, and it's a quaint little place. There, There's a bookshelf on the side with various different types of books. Uh, Scorpio walks in with an, an impressive whistle, you know, like, he's like, wow, this place is right spiffy. And uh, he hands you... Uh, you can see that there is a pot kind of over a fire with various different ingredients on a shelf that has been, you know, crushed up, mixed, and all this stuff. There are, like, pots and bottles on a table kind of just messy about, uh, but the rest of the place looks clean and pristine. So does this seem like potion brewing? Does this seem like alchemy? No, this is, looks like uh, it's not or... any sort of alchemy or anything. This is just tea. Well, this is delightful. Yeah. After one time, one of the one of the royal family had them had me brew up something for them because they were having a bad day. They had to give some sort of speech, and I thought that was fun. I want to keep doing that. And he looks That's down it. to his own cup. Uh, he he hands you both you and Scorpio one. Thank you. It's a special blend I'm I'm working on. She'll try it. Uh, you taste it, and it's a little. On the, it's a little on the dull side. It, it, it tastes like it's missing something. It is sweet and nice and tasty, but it's missing something, some kind of tang. Hmm. Can I ask what you blended with this? Well, just because I enjoy it. I, I, I'm enjoying it. 
I mean, no, I mean, what did you blend? What What is the blend? Oh, what is this made of? Oh, uh, various herbs and something I got from a funny-looking goblin. Found him in the market the other day. What was this goblin's name? Oh, I didn't quite catch it. He was a funny little fella. Uh, <laughs> I think I may know who this goblin is. I might have run into him before in Deathmus proper. Oh, yeah, if you have, could you tell him to find more of those herbs? They're, they're a right good ingredient. I, I think I can. Where in, where in the market did you see him? Was he just wandering around or does he have a stall? Oh, he's got a stall. And he just gives you the general directions. You know where to find this goblin now. Wonderful, wonderful. That's going to be shenanigans later. Um, I want to... I, I'm so sorry to ask. Um, I know that you know... I understand no longer wishing to work a job that you find dull. But I'm trying to get something looked at professionally. And Annabelle is doing it now, but should she not be able to, would there be anything I'd be able to pay you to maybe have a second look? He just looks down at his cup and his shoulders slump a bit. <sighs> you can, it's perfectly fine to say no to me. I'm not asking, I, I, I know this is not your business. This is more someone reaching out for help myself than asking you to identify something meaningless that I found in a trap in a treasure trove. This is something very personal to me. Perhaps at a different time I would have taken you up on that offer. But I already swore off I want to start doing things for myself. Well, if you ever do decide to sell this tea blend, I do frequent Chester City quite a bit. I'd love to get some. Puts one finger to his chin. To sell it. That is a thought. You probably open a fairly impressive tea stall. But I do need to fix this blend up first. It's it's not quite there. It needs something uh, bright. Something, right. Uh, Takes uh, out a notepad out of his jacket and writes it down. Something acidic. Some, some sort of acid. Mm. Orange or citrus, maybe. Citrus fruit. Ask the market for lemons. <laughs> well... I'm well, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, I'm sorry that we came to you under these circumstances. I do hope the next time I see you can be a bit less of a uh, cordial affair. Um, miss? Hmm? Yes? I want to thank you for uh, not insisting. So <laughs> many people nowadays telling me what I should be. It's nice to find someone who accepts me. I, I, everyone deserves to follow what their own passion is. Nobody should be stuck doing something they don't want to do. Your choices are your own and you make who you are. You can see he has a big grin from ear to ear, barring a bright smile. We won't take up any more of your time. Thank you for the tea, it was lovely. Of course. Be sure to, uh... Make sure that Sage Annabelle hears your message loud and clear. He just has a softer smile now. Thank you. <laughs> I hope to see you again. He leads you out the door. <sighs> and Scorpio looks at you. Hmm? Wow. I really thought you were going to, I don't know, push them into submission or something. I think when you mentioned before... You didn't know how much longer you could be hunting. It made me do a bit of thinking myself. Not really sure how much longer I can keep doing this either. Hmm. He takes your hand. Well, whatever it is you end up doing, I'll be there with you. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm glad you'll be there. Someone's going to have to catch you when you stumble. <laughs> And save you from wargs, probably. Oh, not that again. <laughs> you go back to the wizard tower to Sage Annabelle. And as you walk in, you can see that uh, the entire room from the organization of it has gone 
to a mess. There's papers strewn about the place, books on the floor, and you just hear rustling and rumbling and just like shouting, oh no, you get back here. Uh, and you can see yeah. just like sliding across the room, you see Sage Annabelle holding on to your sword as it dra just like drags her around the room. Hi there, I'm a little bit busy just trying to divine the sword. Uh, I'd like to help grab it. Uh, yep, you can give, actually, at your presence, as you move closer to the sword, it stops, and she just, like, flumps to the floor with it. Oof. Ugh. I don't know what you did to get this thing, but it has given me so much trouble. I could tell you the story, but it's long and complicated. I, 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 I would just like to know, were you able to convince my student? No. Your student made it very clear that they no longer want to devote their life to this and that they want to live for themselves and they have every right to, so I will pay for whatever price I need to to have the sword looked at without. Give me a charisma check real quick. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. Oh, shit! Oh! Okay! <laughs> you present this philosophy that Creighton had to her and you can see that she s squints her eyes and stomps that conniving little... Does he have any idea how much he could... I think he does. He just doesn't care if he's not happy. She lowers doesn't her every... shoulders a bit. Isn't everybody entitled to that? She lowers her shoulders and stops mid-sentence and just looks off into the distance. You're right. He's been in this tower far too long. Here's your sword. That'll be five gold pieces. Now, what I did learn is that whatever's divining in this thing is part of a whole, and that whole includes you. There is something akin to the Raven Queen attached to this sword, but the source of it is not in itself, but it's you, sir. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, actually. And I was able to divine that should the user be completely separated, i.e. death, this sword is no more than a regular sword. So if I were to die, this is just a sword again. Exactly. I don't suppose you managed to find anything that was akin to a spirit inside of it? Mm, nada. No soul. No further enchantments. That's fine. Whatever it is that you've got, darling, you'll just have to go find a proper priestess. It'll have to wait. Thank you. Of course. If you ever want to come here for any services that don't involve a flying angry sword, I'll gladly sell you some of my wares. Thank you, and I, I am sorry. I, all of this acting up with this blade is new. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry about that. Next time, if I ever need anything looked at, I won't leave. <laughs> Mm hmm. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of mending to do. Right, right. And I want to just. As she walks away, I just want to leave like an extra gold on her desk. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yep. I apologize. And then I will head to the. I believe the Order of the Gear is where Enoch, Enoch is. At the Church of Erethus. Yep, you are able to find where that is. And that is going to lead us to Enoch. Enoch, your design, this thing, is from the outside and the untrained eye finished, complete. It looks like it could function, but you know something's broken with it. Something's off and Alter has messed with it. He has sabotaged your design. Serene, can I get a moment alone? Uh, uh, of course, Enoch. And she puts her gloves back on and heads outside. And I begin to look around for something flat, a piece of metal, like small and circular, almost coin-like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can probably find a sheet pretty easily. And I take a, I take the stamp and I stamp it on one side. Ah. Yeah. And I tuck this metallic piece of coin under my thumb and finger. And I draw out objection. Okay. Alter. What is it? No, oh, you look me in the eye. And I'm staring across the table, almost like trying to project him across. 
Mm -hmm. You see his visage there, staring you back. We've often talked about the ground rules of what happens around here, but I need to make something absolutely and dangerously clear. I tuck the coin in further. Do you know the difference between a king and a horse? And I'm not talking about the understandable things. Like one's an animal or one's a man. Spit it out. It's based off of instinct. One makes decisive action, and the other leads the other into battle. Where do you think you stand? Are you a horse, or are you a king? Hmm. I guess you'll find out soon enough. And his visage disappears. Nope, nope, I force him there. Alright, give me a wisdom check. He needs to stay, we're having this talk. Yep, you keep him there. No! I'm done talking to you. No, because I'm not done talking to you. My instinct tells me to do what is right. What is necessary. Your instinct tells you to survive. That is what an animal does. You are a horse. I am the king around here, and I will prove that point. And I draw objection towards my forehead. Oh shit. You can see a, a sly lot. smile cross his, cross his face. Just like your mother. And by the time this coin drops to the floor, that decision better be made. And I flip the coin into the air. Pause the coin. I'm going to need you to roll an intim intimidation. <laughs> oh, damn it. Could I do that with advantage, please? Sorry, but no. I <laughs> with a nine, you flip up the coin. It falls to the ground. And you can see Alter's face flash a moment. It's now a face you don't recognize. It's not you. It's someone else. There he is. And the coin dings on the floor and he mouths the word, do it. As the door creaks open, Luna steps in. You see Enoch that he's made what looks like a rifle. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit busy. Don't care. We've been summoned by our banana friend. Oh, a good time. Is Scorpio still with me? Yep, he is. Cool. And he, he just looks, good gods, what is that? And he just eyeballs the weapon that you have now crafted, uh, Enoch. Oh, I thought you were pointing towards the, the machine in the back of me. Never mind. <sighs> it's just missing one piece. Mm. And I can't go anywhere until this is done. Well, we so. have to go now. You can come back and finish this. This is important. It's part of the job. Don't make he me drag out. you, please. He, he pulls out the sending stone. And puts it on the table. Just give me one more attempt. We don't have that time, Enoch. We have to go. It's just one piece. Is it going to take more than five seconds? Sure as hell hope not. Okay, Fine. Enoch, what are you what are you trying to do? I am going to try and maneuver whatever this last piece, whatever it is that has been sabotaged, and fix it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to require a sleight of hand. DC 23. Oh! Oh god, Aaron, please. <laughs> Alright. Against all odds, you complete your invention. Congratulations, you've made your rifle. Oh, God. You may add the gavel into your inventory. You thumb in a small, tiny piece, the coin that you had, and you hear a click, and it's fixed. And he pulls it up, and he, pull, he takes it over to the stamp, and he puts the maker's mark on the side plate before closing it up. And... Looking at his event, his two new inventions, by the way, because one is strictly artificer. You just build that. Right, right, right. Oh, by the way, I have a friend that I want y'all to meet. Uh, perhaps uh, we okay, could, we you do. could introduce us some other time. We do not yeah. have time, Enoch. Come I, on, I, let's go. Move your ass. And I'm going to start I, I pushing toward, him. I whistle towards my robot and have him come with me. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> All right. You you made a made a little robot. Yeah, uh, he looks like a corgi with wings. Oh, 
That's that's adorable. Now I'm push. I'm still pushing him. Yep. Okay, Absolutely. Luna, you bring you bring Enoch, and finally the party is back together at the uh, entrance of the abandoned Warforge factory. Ah, cool. That, that took I, you a few moments longer than I expected. So. I'm sorry. This one was dragging his feet. Oh. Okay. Something that was worth it. <laughs> On the way what there, the I. Uh, uh, listen, it, it's a big, 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 big story, and there's a lot of things and a lot of pieces, but... I, I would love to hear a little, because we're in a little bit of an emergency right now, and not in a fun, happy-go-lucky kind of way. Oh, so it's a good thing I brought an extra oh, well, then. sword, then. Okay. Yes, it is very good you brought your extra sword. Oh, by the way, I want you all to meet Kuro, and I point towards my mechanical dog. Enoch, can we do this later, please? Actually, no. now is a good time. This is an important thing. What is this dog? Uh, he's my mechanical servant. I made it. A, this is Kuro. It is Say a hi, Kuro. Yes. Yep. The dog, the mechanical dog, just waves. Er, 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 er. It's a little paw. Well, I suppose that was important. <laughs> now. What's going? What's going on? So what happened? There is, l let me explain. So there was a bit of a problem um, earlier today. Um, Scorpio, you remember that wonderful lady that we met earlier who was trying to steal supplies? Aye, the scalper. It's a protector. Oh, yes, the lady. protectors. Oh yes, god, so... you ran into her again. Yes, that's not the end of the story. That's a short part of it. Listen, they are planning something and we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, is going to happen soon. And it's not going to involve part of their plan because fortunately we found that beforehand. But when I tried to start negotiating with her, she just says, fuck it, I'm going to do my shit anyway. Okay. So we're in a bit of a pickle because the we don't know where we are or what they're planning. Okay, uh, the only thing you need to tell me, do I actually get to fight these people this time? That depends on what we what we find when we find them. We don't uh, know what their plan is, that's the problem, we're trying to find them. In a perfect world, we would be able to talk to them. Well, I However, don't think we're yes. going to do that. We tricked them with a knife, and now you've said you ran into them earlier, so... We can try said, one more time, tell time, time is the chair. I think that they would like to hear what we have to say. However, unfortunately right now, I am prejudicating a uh, a red cross on both sides of Kuro, by the way. Right. For now. For now, I believe that they are going to be here in this warehouse. Underneath us, there is a warehouse construction silo that they have been trying to renovate in order to create their own Warforged. Although, for what purpose, I do not understand. It cannot be good to have your own personal army. At least not for that one. So hopefully we'll be able to stop them from whatever they're planning here, but we don't... I'm honestly sort of worried. I don't even know if they're going to come here. That is another issue. We don't know exactly where she is going to strike. She said that she was going well, to push forward with her plan. How immediately do we need this information? Because I might know someone. And yes, Joe, I'm invoking my I might know a guy. Mm, okay. Hopefully fairly, fairly soon... Considering I'm... that she seemed very pissed when she responded to me. Well, I, I, I have dab me and Scorpio have dabbled our way in the seedier places in the city a few times, and I have someone that I talk to for information. Might not be cheap, whispers are hard to buy, but having two people as persuasive as yourselves might be able to get the price lowered a bit. Scorpio, Scorpio steps up. Is this the entrance to the factory? Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, perhaps we could divide and conquer. You could go out there, I could stake out this place, make sure nobody makes it in without getting through me first. Sounds Insight this man. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Where's my fucking character sheet? Give me that fucking <laughs> thing. Go to character sheet, go to find Where's Insight. The thing? Give me the thing. <laughs> Insight this man. We only roll 20s in this house. <laughs> yeah. Except when you roll that one. You can tell he's just as concerned about this as you, and he... He can't, he doesn't really understand the extent, but he understands the urgency of it. And he's trying his best to lend his own abilities to help you out in whatever way that he feels that he can. Very well. In that case, you can remain here and defend the place. Is there anyone else that you would like to keep with you? Uh, he he just eyeballs the, the Robo Corgi a bit, but trying not to look like he's looking at it. <laughs> Come on, you can pet him. You can pet him. Uh, he, he won't bite very uh, much. Could I, um... Uh, I just, it's, you know, we'd like, like, just, maybe he, just, uh, someone to keep me company, Enoch, you know? Can, Enoch, can Scorpio borrow your dog? I'll make sure there's not a scratch <laughs> on him. 
I'll protect him with my life. That. He's taken very good care of the rock so far, so... You, you can take care of a rock. You, I just made this. Look at him. He, he holds up both his hands. If, I, if that's too much, no worries. I can hold up off a bunch of bandits on my own. I can't just rush me out of a workshop in order to go to a meeting. Jesus Christ. Hold on. I might know somebody too, uh, holding up the sending stone. They said they might have some benefit to help us with the protectors uh they came and talked to me earlier today and i was just like all right just i'll talk to you later they said they would That's... help you with the protectors fantastic but they would help me with the protector problem as well as various other things but listen i'm sure that's neither here nor there well good maybe they could help me guard this place fantastic we should call them immediately yes because i'd rather not leave you here alone you're perfectly capable and i know that but i also know these people are incredibly underhanded and i'd rather you not to be used to keep us from kicking their ass ah very well i'll be sure to save some for you as well no i i just need to make sure you're safe all right all right i'll stay with them i'm gonna invoke i'm gonna invoke divine intervention and say no no more splitting the party <laughs> no more splitting party and luna just squints at you like no you're not absolutely I'll not. I'll stay with him. <laughs> All three what other characters. No. No. <laughs> absolutely not. You are not. You are not infecting him. If you're the only one who who knows who the, if you're the only one who knows who this guy is, then maybe like then we're going to have to all meet him together. Allies, we are wasting time. But before we go, I need to give you one of these, and I'm going to reach into my pocket. And I'm going to pull out the Warforged Souls. Oh uh, yep. yeah! I forgot to grab this. Oh, where uh, the fuck I, did you get those? We literally just told you we were in the in the Warfort area. These are essential to making them. Long story short, the, these are the <laughs> souls of Warforged. They are essential to operating the machines down there, and I am certain the protectors will want them back. I am going to keep one. Renee, you will have another. She will take it gladly. You will take the third. Guard these things with your life because the protectors will take yours before they take it. Oh no, I'll take theirs before they even get and begin to take mine and I'll put it in my bag. Well, uh, I can only imagine one place to be extremely unreachable. And I take off my hat and I put it there and I put my hat back on. He didn't give I you did one. Give Enoch one. He didn't give Enoch one. I, 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 get, I did not give Enoch one. Uh, well, I thought you said Enoch, you take the other. No, no Renee didn't. and Luna. Yep. Oh. No, uh, but I will turn to Enoch and I will say, and Enoch, for you. I believe I have information regarding your mother's death. He puts his hand up in front of Nathaniel. I've already committed myself to the idea of letting her die with her secrets, okay? Well, then I suppose that my afternoon has been for nothing. Truly a waste of time. But what have you committed yourself to about your father? Uh, there's a blank stare. Oh, Samuel? okay. Right. I'm not certain, but I think I know. Well, if you're not very interested in hearing it. And I'm going to turn to Luna and fall over. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say you guys head off in that direction, and we're going to call the session there. All right. Okay. For now. Party's back together, uh, guys. It's fine. Finally. We did it.